All right, everybody, welcome back to the channel. It is Rob at Smirking Gun Reviews. We have made it to the end of season two of The Expanse in pretty much record time because, <laughs> again, like I'm on vacation, so I am just cramming as many things as I can into my vacation. This is it, making reviews. So uh, enjoy. Uh, so season two, episode 13, it is called Caliban's War. Uh, so full spoilers if you have not seen the episode. Um, and like how I said last episode that that one was almost perfect. This is pretty much a perfect uh, season finale. Um, we kind of just go jumping back and forth uh, between the Rasananti and uh, Christian and Bobby and Katyar, Kotyar, uh, their situation on uh, Maui's little pleasure ship or whatever it's, it is. And then a little bit with Dr. Janice and Dr. Yaturbi. Now, the visuals in this, okay? People like wanting me to talk about this. The visuals in this episode were goddamn just fucking awesome. The the ship over Venus with the, like the, the not balloons, but the like, uh, I don't know, they're, they're like balloons. <laughs> Let's just call them balloons because I don't feel like you know thinking that hard about it. Just looked fantastic. Uh, the proto-molecule creature looked great and scary as hell. It looked, it looked like some shit out of dead space, a little bit, a little bit. Um, some of the less wet-looking creatures. Um, <laughs> uh, no, again, it that, that's not what it looked like at all. I'm sorry. It looked like the uh, dudes from Mass Effect series, the game series. And I know I've mentioned that this show reminds me of Mass Effect a lot. Um, the... Uh, there are these like zombie looking creatures that, that look just like this and why I can't remember uh, they're like a part machine part uh, human things that used to be people there uh, they go through this process that makes them like they're kind of like experiments by this like big race of aliens that turn us into the stuff so <laughs> uh, the indoctrined is what they're called in the game that's what this sucker looks like except like bigger um the, the whole claustrophobic feel of it. And, you know, you got a monster on your ship, very alien. Uh, so that was cool. You got a host a cool, like, negotiation escape thing going on with Christian. And every scene cutting away felt like its own season finale cliffhanger. <laughs> so there were so many moments where they could have been like, boom, that's the end. Cut. Um, so it was just really tense. Uh, it was nerve-wracking how many times they would cut away just when you need them to stick with a scene. Uh, but it was awesome at the same time. Now, all my complaints are out the window from the last couple of episodes because they just brought it. So, here we are. We got Christian and Bobby and... Uh, I'm gonna, I keep butchering his name, so you know who I'm talking about, right? If you're watching this, you know who I'm talking about because I'm sick and tired of butchering this guy's name. They have like a Mexican standoff basically with these guys of Miles. And so they figure out that Bobby, Bobby figures out how to get out of there so she can get to her power armor. They, you know, let her get out. Now she has her great kick ass moment against the two guys. Uh, she has that great moment with the electrician who is, <laughs> after a little bit of uh, talking to, it's pretty silly that this guy who is just, he's, it's not worth it. Uh, so he gives it up, you know, he lets her in. I do like how he asks her to rough him up and throw him in a locker. That was a nice touch. It shows her kicking ass um, in this situation. And then we get this, like, really great moment where dude is turning her over, is selling her out. They're giving her an out. And instead of doing that, she gets up to take, you know... You know, she's not, she's going to use herself to try to save all of them. So even though he's not willing to sacrifice himself, she is willing to sacrifice herself for everybody. And then when you realize that Mao has already made that decision, which was pretty easy to figure out what was going to happen here. Uh, it was all set up just so we could have the kick-ass reveal at the end here. So they're going to kill everybody, but they don't know that Bobby has got her power armor. And just proceeds to wipe the goddamn floor with all of them, which was beautiful. And what we wanted. We want to see our heroes kick some ass. 
It's been a rough 13 episodes, and even though Mal gets away and Aaron Wright is now causing some fucking Lannister-like shit down on Earth now, uh, <laughs> it's nice for our heroes and anti-heroes to, you know, start kicking ass and taking names. So they now have, you know, at least Christian and Bobby have taken control of that situation. Now, with the whole Venus thing, we'll get to at the end. But so with Holden and crew together, and despite, you know, having them all talking and trying to apologize to each other for what went on, which to me was just the most uninteresting part of it because I just wanted them back together, okay? I don't care how. Um, but then once they see the, the monster, it's a tense skein. I love it. What the fuck is that? You know, like that's a realistic reaction. You know, it reminds me a lot. Like I said, I'm like alien. Now this thing's not taking out crew members. It's looking for power. It's looking for a radiation source. And so it was really great to see them all try to figure things out, how to get this thing out of there. Uh, Holden pretty much gets himself screwed over pretty hard and puts him between a rock and a hard place of how to take care of this thing because they don't want to kill him, but they know they might have to. And I wasn't sure what was going to happen. I really thought that this could be it for Holden. And that's one of the great things like about this show. It's not like you're waiting around for people to just die. It's that they really might do it and you won't expect it. I still don't expect it. Um, because they, they, they really make you ride that intensity of life or death. Like even Miller, I thought when he died, I thought maybe he's getting out of this even till the last minute until he took off his mask. I was like, okay, now it's done. But I felt like there was always hope. And even in this, I felt like there was always hope, but there was also that chance that this could be it for our guy Holden. And I actually... Because I haven't liked some of his roles in the past. I was early on, didn't really care what had happened to him. But now you kill Holden, you kill anybody on the Rossi and I am going to lose my fucking shit. So it was great that they figured out about, that uh, Prax figured out about the nuclear stuff. That it was looking for radiation like the plants. That was ac excellent. And so their plan to get the nuclear bomb taken out and take it out on the ship and lure it out was perfect. The only thing that almost took me out of this, it took, well, it did. It did take me out of it for about two seconds. Was when they get the thing out of the ship and Prax freezes. That bummed me out. It kind of pissed me off because I was on this like intense, believable, crazy roller coaster. And then Prax goes and stands there like an asshole. I don't care. For anybody out there, this is just my opinion of him staring at it, wondering if it's May, waiting to the last second to go, whoop. I don't, I, I didn't like that, but I still like, I have expected him to jump off with the bomb, to be honest. Cause, and, and I didn't want that to happen, because here's the thing about the guy, Prax, and the guy who plays him. The guy who plays Prax, if you've ever seen him in a lot of stuff, he usually plays kind of people you don't like. And I want to like him. And I want him to continue. So I didn't want to see him bitch out and just like stand there while this alien, you know, proto molecule is just standing, you know, coming at him. So it was nice in the end that he did let it go. And then the turnaround. Again, another great alien type shot of this thing floating in space as the rocket, you know, the blast from the engine just takes it out. Fucking brilliant. It was great. It's not the most original thing in the entire world, but it's the execution of it that is... Mwah. And the writing. Again, visuals and writing in this episode, bar none, great stuff. And again, this is, to me, the best sci-fi I've ever seen on television. It's pretty. It's one of the best sci-fis I've ever seen, period. Um, and so they, they, it, gets, it gets blasted. They start having their heart-to-hearts. Everybody's happy. Everybody likes Prax again. And we get Amada Nagata. Jesus Christ. She starts talking to Holden about... Uh, she confesses that she didn't get rid of the protomolecule sample. Now, before we get into that, let's talk about the shit going on on Venus. So it seems like, okay, the protomolecule creature died. 
and then that shit starts happening on Venus. Now, did that stuff happen because it sensed that the other creature died, or is it just because the proximity of that ship got too close? Because what happens to that shit, ship, shit, was also really crazy uh, and great visually of how the whole ship was basically taken apart piece by piece and frozen in space and, you know, in state or whatever. And they're all just floating there. So I guess that's it for Dr. Janice Anus and Dr. Iturbi. And that sucks because I was just starting to like them. <laughs> I was starting to like enjoy them quite a bit. Uh, and now it looks like they're fucked. <laughs> I don't know how, they, how you get out of that. Although the expression on their faces kind of seemed like, oh boy. Like, wow. Like they're seeing something that even though they're about to die, is nobody's ever going to see that shit again. So it seems like the proto-molecule is definitely a lot more powerful than they thought. So, oof. going into next season, that'll be uh, pretty intense. Now getting back to what she's talking about with Holden... Um, the big thing that was just, I didn't see coming and I had forgotten about because I was like, what? I did not realize Fred Johnson was going to become a part of this equation, but I'm really glad it did. So even though she didn't get rid of it, I did not see that she was going to give it to Fred Johnson. And I thought that was a fucking brilliant move, even though I don't. Okay, so she's saying that Earth has it, Mars has it, the belt needs it too. I guess that's true. Um, and if it is going to be in somebody on the belt's hands, it should probably be in Fred Johnson's. So I did not see that coming. Brilliant, brilliant, brilliant. Now, I know that this is only, I'm only at like 12 minutes in, so my other videos are much longer than that. But I think I've covered it all, and that's pretty goddamn incredible. We've got a great, great ending to this season. And so I almost hate to stop watching today, but I've got some other videos I want to make. And so we will start fresh with season three tomorrow and uh, hopefully be done with it before my vacation's over. I was hoping to do Daredevil season three, but I guess I was wrong about the date on that. That doesn't come out till the 19th, but I do have Man in the High Castle season three coming out on Friday. So we will be rotating that show and this show for the rest of the weekend after that. So whichever one gets done first. So anyway, incredible, incredible, incredible stuff. Sorry for some of the, you know, negative opinions I had about the last few episodes, but I can't help it. It's just the way I feel. And like this episode, which is like a 10 out of 10. So if I had like that kind of scale, two, two thumbs up, 10 out of 10, five out of five stars, all that shit. So if you like this video, please hit the like button, uh, comment, share, subscribe, all the usual rigmarole, share, please share this with other people because I, that this show is incredible. Um, I want to thank everybody that's been watching these. I want to thank all the support we've gotten. We're moving slowly but surely in subscribers and comments. I've been looking at my analytics, and it's just incredible. So just thank you guys so much. I love you guys. Negative, positive, all the reinforcement I get on here, it's all good. So unless you're a real prick, and then I just remove your comments because, yeah. So anyway, this is Robert Smirking Gun Review saying we'll see you on the next video, and have a great night. Bye.